Hi, Gemini. Welcome back. This reading is for Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Gemini need to know in love and romance? What does Gemini need to know for the weekend, August 9th to the 11th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? What do we have for Gemini for August 9th to the 11th? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What do we have for Gemini? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What do we have? Thank you. <sighs> Chariot, Knight of Pentacles. You might be traveling. You might be moving forward with something, with someone. Tra yeah, it looks like you might be traveling. I got Knight of Pentacles too. That could be Virgo energy. Let's keep going. Someone from your past. Page of Pentacles, reaching out. Are you going to go see someone from your past? Is that it? Is there like a tea party situation here? A gathering, a lunch date, a picnic, something nice and sweet. Looks like there's somebody here from your past that you're trying to reconnect with, that you want to move forward with. Is there anything else? Anything else for Gemini for the weekend, 9th to the 11th? We have the Tower, Sudden Change, some news or something, Two of Swords, Indecision, Needing to Make a Choice, Pulled in Two Different Directions, and then you make a choice. You get clarity here and focus, speaking up. What else is there? Oh my, don't, don't fall. Ace of Cups. This is spiritual and love, self-love, an offer of love. It's in the beginnings, a new beginning. It's like a new relationship, a new love, something that's in the beginning stages. You got three aces. This is a time of major new beginnings. You know, it is new moon too, which is great for setting intentions for new projects, new things. Nine of Wands. Look at this. There's like an army here guarding. Standing guard. This is protection. Nine of Wands. Usually you see someone who's kind of disempowered. Like they're hurt. They have a bandage on their head. It's called the Wounded Warrior card. But every tarot creator takes a different spin on these cards. And in this one, she's depicted... Not only is the main person very strong and empowered, but they have a whole army to back them up. Defending. On guard. Protective. Hmm. Six of Swords. Look at that. It's like a child on the back of a swan. And there's like these ravens or crows over here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the five ravens, first of all, you know, if it's crows or ravens, I don't know, you know, they call it a murder of crows. First, of, I love crows. I love ravens. They're very spiritual. They're super smart. I mean, you hear stories about a crow couple where the female crow had her beak broken and the male crow and her offspring um, protected her and the male crow would feed her for the rest of her life. Okay. Like where they, they fly around her and protect her. It's getting that kind of vibe too. It's very protective energy. That's, and when they get together, it's called a murder of crows because their, their intention is to murder, right? Like, like if they all talk about it in their, you know, own way. And if there's some crow that stepped out and did something like shady or wrong or something that was unforgivable, when you see crows gather together, they call it murder of crows because they will all kill that one crow because their intent is to murder. So I feel like with this and this, Six of Swords is leaving a painful situation, leaving a toxic situation behind. And you see these five crows here? They're standing guard on top of these five swords. Five swords represents... Betrayal, scandal, ruin, shit-talking, backstabbing, um, lies, uh, taking advantage, bad behavior, okay? Cheating, stealing, whatever. And you see this big swan carrying this 
child, which would speak to innocence and vulnerability, or carrying this person to safety. So it looks like like there's an energy here of being protective and standing guard, like defending your people, your tribe, your clique, your person. That's very sweet. Anything else? Anything else, Spirit Guides? Anything else? It's like, that That can speak to this too. You find out something with a tower, something that you weren't sure about with Two of Swords. You didn't know which way to go. You were pulled in two different directions. But with this tower card, something that you weren't sure about, now you're sure. You get to the truth of the situation. You hear two sides. And when this tower card happens, it's like you get to the truth of it. And it brings a whole new beginning. Anything else? Spirit guides, anything else? Thank you. Three of Cups. Yeah, this is a sense of community. Um, this comes up for dating, um, celebration, gatherings. Ten of Swords. Hmm. This is Ten of Swords is is betrayal. It's like the toxic ending to a cycle. It's somebody who has been, you know, really put through it. Got this new moon here too. It's the end. There's only up to go from here. It might. I feel like this Three of Cups might work in different ways. One is. Celebrating because the tough times are over. Or another one is like the people around you creating, like some people around you might be a past person you dated. Or what, what's the Ten of Swords who's creating a whole bunch of like stress and drama? What's the Ten of Swords? Can you clarify the Ten of Swords? Maybe they want to reconcile. I don't know. Can you clarify the Ten of Swords? Two of Wands. Wanting more. It's like something's ended because you were in something, you're in a relationship, and maybe you want more. Like, what is this again? Because I think you got this before as well, Gemini. Can we clarify the Ten of Swords? Can we clarify the Ten of Swords again? What is this Ten of Swords? What is this Ten of Swords? Five of Wands. Yeah, it's jealous people, competition, king of swords, five of swords. It's, it's like you're being forced to, um, are you being forced? I don't know. The king of swords and five of swords is super manipulative and like vicious with their speech. I don't know. Let's pull some Oracle cards. Spirit guides, what do we have for Gemini for the weekend, 9th to the 11th, Friday to Sunday? What love messages are there for Gemini for the 9th to the 11th? Can we please get some clarifiers? What messages are there for Gemini for the 9th to the 11th? What messages are there for Gemini for the 9th to the 11th? What messages are there for Gemini for the 9th to the 11th? The only thing that is real is love. Shift your focus from the problem back to love. I think you guys got that before too, is give your relationship a chance too. Yeah, there you are, Gemini, twins. Speak the language of love. Loving words have the power to change someone's life, including your own. Okay, so you might have been fighting and stuff, okay? This can speak to fight, the yeah, fighting. And I said, like, toxic speech. That was the 
King of Swords, so air energy, Gemini energy, Libra Aquarius energy. Five of Swords is, is this. I said already what Five of Swords is, right? Six is leaving that. Can Knight of Cups, Six of Wands, Lovers, wanting to go somewhere else. The Devil, Nine of Swords, Fool, King of Wands, Temperance. Mm, it's like you're not happy where you are. But let's see. Can we get a uh, Romance Angels card, please, for Gemini for the weekend? Ninth to the 11th, what do we have? For Gemini, what do we have for the 9th to the 11th, please? What do we have? For Gemini, for the ninth of the thank you reconciliation, some someone from your past is returning to your life. There you go, someone from your past. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. That was in the daily read today, and I got Gemini with the lovers and the dragon. So you should see the daily read. It had these exact two cards. All right. So getting to know each other, deepening bond, reconciliation with someone from your past that was a toxic ending. All right, let's pull one last love oracle card. This is the Journey of Love by Elena Fairchild. Spirit guys, can we get one last love oracle message for Gemini for the weekend, 9th to the 11th? We get one last love message for Gemini for the weekend. Sorry, for the 9th to the 11th. What do we have? Thank you. The communal dance. Soft. So the communal dance is first. Number five. It says lover. That's see, it says lover, the first word out, and you guys have the lover's card, which is Gemini. So there's another confirmation. So it says lover. Oops, let's tap that back. You have been alone too long. Your community calls you to surrender your isolation for this moment in time and instead join the cosmic conga line. Do you know how special you are? So much so that this community would not be the same without you. Your individuality and uniqueness can only enhance this group of souls that calls you to dance with them. Men and women, human and spirit, heaven and earth, your community is vast and rich and has much to share with you. Be lifted in celebration of belonging. Recognize that you are a part of something great. Can your heart grow warm with recognition? You belong. You are meant to be a part of this great dance of love awakening on the earth. Your heart is already beating to the rhythm of the music. This oracle brings you guidance. You are being drawn into a new community that is more aligned with your innate spiritual vibration. You'll feel more at home there and be able to share your gifts and talents more freely and with greater support. Let go of relationships or situations that you've been holding on to out of fear. If they are meant to continue with you, they will remain. If not, they will fall away, creating space for new connections to come into your life now. This is not a time to hide in what you have known, but to be open to playful connection with kindred spirits soon to be met. And then there's a poem. When I stood in front of you, I knew something was in store. I could feel the excitement of our journey ahead, for I had been that way before. Each person comes into our life with lessons we may see, and in the reflection of that other self is the person we can be. All right. And then we've got uh, soft. Sorry, that was the communal dance, number five. And this is soft, 47. A sanctuary bathed in soft light. Your heart is receptive, inviting, and gentle. It brings strength to the weary, comfort to the lonely, and healing to the wounded. It is a magnet for all that is needed for you, your beloveds, your world. Don't imagine you must always be the fighter going against the part of your nature that longs for harmony and peace. This is your time to be soft, to surrender, to let the subtle waves of the heart invite love in and to receive. In doing so, you will give so much. This oracle brings you a message of peace. Surrender now, be soft, even just for this moment of quiet reflection. You have been working, perhaps been working too hard at growing and living. 
Take some moments to replenish and allow the divine to help you, dear one. Be soft so you are receptive to the divine. It is when we let go that we truly perceive the obstacles that lie between us and oneness with the divine lover. Let go and perceive that the divine lover is already awakening in your heart. And the poem says, You are the softness he desires. You help light his way. You nurture all that he holds dear through tempest clouds, dis though, sorry, though tempest clouds dismay. And in the quiet of the storm, his gentleness comes through, and in the shelter of his arms, his heart is there for you. That's lovely. All right. I'm so sorry that I have to read these poems. It's like literally getting a caveman to read these poems. <laughs> but I'm trying to be better. All right. That is... Nope. There's one more. Let's get a yogic path card. I feel so bad. Like every time I have to read these poems for any sign you know there's like this way that you're supposed to read poems and half the time I'm just trying to get through the messages and it really like stops the flow when I mess it up anyways spirit guides we have one last card one spirit card we're at 15 that's not that bad final card this is the yogic path by Sahara Rose what do we have what do we have Spirit guys can get one last message, a spirit message for Gemini for the weekend, 9th to the 11th. What do we have? <sighs> Final message. Thank you, Vishuddha. Vishuddha. Let's see. And karma. Vishuddha. Vishuddha. Let's see. What is that? What page? 57 and it has to do with the chakras which chakra is that throat should have known it's blue all right um upright you came to this world to speak and express and you are doing so beautifully now is the time to let your unique vibration shine speak your truth write your message sing your soul's language express your innate art this is a wonderful time to begin any communication related project such as a book podcast or business or to take your existing project to the next level. The throat chakra reminds, reminds us to speak our truth, so continue to share what's on your mind with your closest relationships. Remember that it is just as essential to listen as it is to speak, and great communication skill comes in mastering both. Listen to those around you to deepen relationships and listen to those who inspire you to deepen wisdom. Know that most communication is not in the words spoken, but rather in their expression. This is the time for you to craft your own. And then there's a reverse. Is there something you need to say? You know you need to say, but you can't muster up the courage to say it. Have you been waiting to get to a specific point to begin sharing your truth? But every day that moment feels further and further away. Let me tell you something. The, that moment is now. It is time for you to begin expressing the divinity that exists inside of your soul through the gifts the universe has blessed you with. Whether it's through words, movement, food, art, or music, it's time to express yourself and let your truth echo. Beautiful. All right, now we'll go to karma. And that's the last card for today. It's karma, and karma is on page 23 to do with spirituality. The sum of one's actions. Upright. Positive karma, you've done a lot of good on this planet and the universe is rewarding you in her favors. Life feels a little easier, a little more colorful, a little more beautiful. You are walking on the path toward your dharma, which creates the greatest karma one can experience. By saying yes to the purpose of your soul, you are saying yes to the greater power of the universe. Continue devoting your life to the service of spirit and life will continue to unfold its wonders. Reverse. Negative karma, sometimes we take a wrong turn and move away from the direction of our dharma. At first, it can feel like a poke, which becomes a punch, and can eventually manifest as an accident if you continue to ignore it. This isn't the universe going against you, but rather sending messages that you're taking the wrong course and must shift gears to come back into alignment with your dharma. Take a break from social media, television, and all social obligations and use that time to reflect. When did things begin to get be difficult? What decisions did you make around that time? What alternatives could have better suited your sole purpose? State your commitment to surrendering to your highest self and doing the work it takes to get there. Things will change as soon as you do. So you could take the upright or the reverse of that. It just looks like here there is a reconciliation with someone from your past and you're getting to know them better. 
It's really lovely. It just looks like you guys had a toxic past. There was some misunderstandings. There was some shit talking. It got nasty. It got ugly. And it's saying here, speak the language of love. Um, and uh, that's it. That's the reading. Um, so I'll see you for your weeklies. And take care. Have a great day. Bye.